Welcome back to Introduction to iOS Application Development at SSFS. In this video, we're going to be talking about the app lifecycle and take a look at the different states an app can be in. In iOS, your view controllers can be in several different states. For example, the view could not be loaded, it could be appearing, it could have already appeared, it could be in the process of disappearing or already disappeared. And in between these different states are various transitions. And associated with these transitions are methods that are included as part of the iOS uh, SDK, or the Software Development Kit. And as you might expect, these different methods correspond in the transition between one state to another. Uh, the most common of which you've already seen is view did load. And you see that method at the top of your view controller file when you start a new app. There's also a view will appear, a view will disappear, a view did appear, and a view did disappear. And we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, each one of these and how they can be used in writing code. So I've created a new app, it's a single view app, to kind of demonstrate this. I'm going to go to the main storyboard, and here's my single view controller. And the first thing I want to look at is what subclass of view controller is controlling this view here. In order to find that out, I'm going to go to the uh, Identity Inspector. And let me click on the View. I clicked on this yellow button, the View button here. And I see here that it says Class View Controller. And that corresponds to this ViewController.swift file. So the code written in here will help control the views in this View Controller here. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. I'm going to open that up. And so you see that I have this view did load function and it overrides the view did load that's in the UI view controller class. Again, view control, this view controller is a subclass of UI view controller. And so I'm going to override this view did load function. And I'm just going to add a print statement here. I'm going to print the name of the view controller. And I'll put view did load. And let me go ahead and run this app. I'll make sure my debug area, my console is available. And you might expect there's nothing exciting here because I have no um, images or objects on the screen, but I have this print statement, view controller view did load, that printed after the view did load. We've already put some code in view did load in, in some of the sample apps we've done, and that's a good place to put um, code that's going to happen one time when your view is loaded. For example, having setting the size of a label or the color of a label. Let me go ahead and stop this. The next lifecycle method is view will appear. So I'm going to go ahead and add that method, and I'm just going to start typing view will, and you can see it comes up, view will appear here. If I hit enter, it automatically puts in the override. Uh, because view will appear is a method in UI view controller, and I'm adding my own custom code here, I have to override that method. Whenever I override a method, I have to make a call to the function in the super class. So I'm going to call super view will appear. Since this animated parameter is a required parameter view will appear, I'll put it here as well. So let me go ahead and I'll just take out the bool. Whoops. There we go. And now I can add, I can add my custom code. All I'm going to do is I'm going to print view controller view will appear. Let's go ahead and run that. And you can see it happens pretty quickly, but view did load appears first, and then view will appear appears after. View will appear is a great place to put code that's going to take place right before your view is displayed. So for example, if you had a location-based app and your location is updated, the view will appear method is a great place to put 
the function to update that location. All right, the next method we're going to talk about is view did appear. And again, I'll make a call to the superclass and view did appear. And I'll pass the animated parameter. And I'm just going to go ahead and print view controller view did appear. So as you can tell by the names, view will appear is run right before the view is displayed, and view did appear is run right after the view is displayed. So that's a good place uh, to put code that needs to run every time the view appears, but it may take a little bit longer time to run. So if I'm fetching data from a remote server, I'm going to put that in view did appear. Now let's go ahead and stop this. I'll run it one more time. And I see those methods appearing there. Now the last two are the view will appear and view will disappear methods. But in order to really see how those work, I need another view controller. So I'm going to add those and Let's go ahead and put those in over right, whoops, view will disappear. And I'll call the super class view will disappear. And I'll put some code in there in a second. Oops, actually I'm gonna go ahead and print it in now. Uh, view controller view will dis appear and then I'll put view did disappear call the super class view did and Add the view controller text view did disappear. Let's take out the space here. So the view will disappear. That's called uh, right before a view disappears from the screen. So when I tap the back button in a tab view controller, if I switch tabs in a tab view controller, that view will disappear is called. Um, if I'm going to save data that I've made, save edits that I've made in data, that's a good place to put it. Those things in will, view will disappear. View did disappear is actually called after the view did disappear. Uh, and this is a uh, place where, for example, if you have an audio playing in a view, you can cancel it in the view did disappear. So you'd stop the playing there. Okay, so again, in order to see these work, we actually need another view. So I'm going to go back to my main storyboard. I'm going to add another view controller from my object library. And drag that in next to this. Minimize that a little bit. To make the navigation easy, I'm going to uh, actually embed my first view in a tab view controller. So I'll make sure this view is selected. I'll go to editor embed in tab bar controller and then I'm going to control drag from my tab bar controller to my second view controller and use a view controller relationship segue. So now I have two tabs. So again in this view controller we can see that the class is view controller and I have this view controller dot swift in order to add methods that control this view, I need a new file. So I'm going to go to uh, the file menu and do new file, or I can hit command N. I want a Cocoa Touch class file. I want to make sure it's a subclass of UI view controller. So I'll get 
and I'll call it view controller two. Again, this is very important that it's a subclass of UI view controller. I'll hit next. This is just telling me where I should put it. I would put it in the view lifecycle folder. I'll hit create. And you can see now I have a view controller swift file and I have a view did load function and some other text here. I'm going to go ahead and just remove this comment. And before I can write code, or before this code can actually be interpreted by my view, I need to connect it in the, my main storyboard. So I'm going to click on this view controller, and again, right now the class is a generic UI view controller. I'm going to do a drop down, and I'm going to find my view controller 2 file and select that. So now the, the code written in this file will control this view here. So let's go back to this. Actually, I'm going to be lazy here. I'm going to go to this view controller and I'm going to copy all these methods and I'm going to paste them here. And I'm just going to change this to view controller 2, view controller 2, view controller 2. So hopefully we can see the difference. Okay. So let's go ahead and run this. Let me stop the first instance from running. I'll run it again. And so you can see the same thing happened. I have my uh, view did load, view will appear, and view did appear all from the first view controller. I'm going to go over here and click the second tab. And now you'll notice that the first thing that happens is it calls the view did load method on view controller 2 and then view will appear. Then it calls the method the view will disappear and view did disappear from my first view controller and finally it calls the view controller 2 view did appear method. If I go back to view controller one, same thing should happen. So it calls the view will appear for my first view controller, view will disappear, and view did disappear on controller two, and then finally the view did appear on my first view controller. So this is a very quick look at the life cycle of an app and what methods are called when a view disappears off screen. And it's important for you to understand where to put code uh, depending on what actions your app is taking. And they each have different functions, but exactly what you'll put kind of depends on what the app is doing uh, and what you're needing it to do. So in the next video, we're going to talk about the MVC or model view controller method of app design, which is the paradigm that Apple follows.